<laughs> we get it. We get it. <laughs> We're going to take it to the next one. In five years' time, who will be the most popular equipment supplier for home gym strength? Uh, Brandon, you want to start this one off? <laughs> yeah, and I'm going to give it the redundant answer of I still think Rogue is. I know there's a lot of people out there, and it's it's interesting to me in the space where a lot of people are actually like they're anti 35s. There's a lot of anti rogue people out there as well. I think overall though, again, as I mentioned in one of my earlier answers, I think they still offer the best or some of the best quality to price ratio out there. Yes, they can be more expensive than other brands. Like if you're looking at Walmart or even some of the other brands that have popped up recently, but I think you're getting a higher quality product for the most part. And for me personally, made in USA is something that's important to me. And I think in the times we're in are going to continue to get more important to a lot of other people as well, especially as those tariffs and steel prices and import fees go up as well. And the price difference isn't as big as it used to be for some of the other brands out there. And I think they just do a, a sheer crap ton amount of volume, right? And especially now that they're starting to diversify what they do initially coming off as like a CrossFit brand and then getting really into powerlifting and strongman stuff now too. I just think that they're so massive where unfortunately for some people, I don't think they'll ever be dethroned, but the space is also getting much bigger where there's plenty of room for everyone to play. So right for me. I think I agree with that. And uh, mostly to do with uh, the diversity that Rogue offers, because it's, you know, do you want to do grip training? They've got Iron Mind. They got some of the best grip training. Do you want to do Strongman? They've got Steve Slater basically on staff. Uh, helping design their bags. Do you want to do weightlifting? They have the Pyros bar, uh, not to mention that. Uh, so the tariff thing with import fees getting higher and kind of the gap closing on the difference between uh, an import versus American made. Uh, but also Rogue has the closeout section, which is a gold mine for a lot of people, especially if you're trying to get into something that's, you know, maybe a really expensive bar, like one example would be the 28 mil weightlifting bar for 195 bucks that I'm pretty sure is a bare steel pyros bar. Uh, that's an amazing deal when you actually go and think about it. So I, I, I'm on the same page as you. I think Rogue is still going to be king in five years, uh, not to discount other brands out there. There's going to be some other big brands as well, but Rogue will still be king. I agree. I'm, I'm with both of you guys. They've been the <clears throat> dominant player for years. They're a marketing machine. They have the most brand awareness by far. And to your point, Curtis, their catalog is so expansive. And the fact that they do a lot of third-party wholesale and retail that some other companies don't really participate in, like Rep. Rep is mainly selling their own stuff with a little bit of concept and things like that here on here and there. But Rogue's catalog is so big and their reach is so out there that I just it's hard to bet against rogue in the near term or possibly even the long term so i'm gonna be contrarian here um i totally agree with you guys i think that rogue has a great lead right now in the marketplace um but i think rep has at least a good chance of coming in uh a very close second maybe even tied with rogue in five years the reason that i think that is that rep is in there listening to the community, they're in the home gym subreddit, they're in the Facebook groups, they're, they're listening and responding in real time. And I think that that's really important because they're listening and understanding what the people are saying and, and listening to the feedback. And then they're able to, to make changes and respond a lot quicker. So I think that that has helped them get to where they are <clears throat> currently, like number two, number three, and over the next five years, if they continue to work on that strategy, I think that they can bridge the gap between them and Rogue. Yeah, I think, yeah that's I a great point. Yeah, and I agree. And they're, they're putting a lot of focus on it. And that's their goal, right? Their goal isn't to be like the, the number two person. Their goal, and the, I think the owners come out and said it, they want to compete directly with Rogue. And, and I think that's very bold of them. And they, they take a lot of things. I think for me personally, and, and I love rep, uh, I got a the dumbbells right here behind me. I think the main issue though is, is being an importer of goods. And I think rep may attest to this. It might not be in a publicly stated statement, but the problem is it's like guerrilla warfare over there in terms of loyalty to people. You could be a company and go overseas and you can do all the R and D you come up with the design of something. And those companies you use to produce that and manufacture overseas will go around and let someone else come and just slap their logo on it and resell it. So I think that's going to eat yeah. into them. But, but I do agree that I think they're going to continue to grow tremendously. But I think 
even five years might not be enough to to pace the the juggernaut that is rogue at this point but those are some real good points yeah yeah i i would say i mean i would i would love to see the numbers of everybody but i think the gap between rogue and rep right now is larger than we know just because rogue has so they i mean they're outfitting outfitting facilities they have a full line of cardio they're selling like adam mentioned they're selling third party stuff like I, th- I think the numbers are quite a bit different right now. I also agree with Kyle. Like I don't, and I've said this on the podcast I before, I don't think rogues in the weeds like rep is. So I say, I would say like in five years, they're not going to, they're gonna, not going to be selling more than rogue, but they might, the, the gap will be closer than what it is today, but the gap's so large right now. And I do think um, Brandon's right with, with the American made, um, just making a good amount in America, it's easier. And I don't think we've seen this recently, but it should be easier to innovate, um, and test and bring things to market. Um, I don't know, like, I don't know if if they're doing that right now, but I can see rogue executing better here in the near future. So, yeah, I, I think that's a really good point too, right? Because again, with the overseas part of it, the amount of time it takes for someone to develop and then ship and then get that you're committing like to containers worth of equipment in some cases after seeing like a prototype or a one-off and then you're committing to maybe hundreds or thousands of units and then when they show up at your door what do you do with them you're going to sell them as is and i don't want to call out any companies specifically by name but i know that's been a fact of people where they get in equipment that's been subpar not up to the standard that they were led to believe it would be and they have to sell it because they have to sell it. They're not going to ship it back overseas. So that's a great point. Would anybody think a different number two, like anybody other than those two right now? You're going to spoil our last question, Jake. <laughs> well, I'm thinking like, yeah. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you want to get to the last one? Yeah, I think, I think so. All right. Well, unfortunately this will be the last question. All right. So what company not named rogue rep or Titan has the best opportunity to be number one in five years? Not saying that they will, because we all, I mean, we just heard your guys' takes. Rogue's going to be on top. Um, Kyle, uh, with a rep in there as well. Um, anyone else out there? So are we saying uh, number one, or are we saying like big big impact? Let, let's let's say big impact, because we, we know how you guys feel about that number one spot. So, Jake, you want to start? Uh, sure. Uh, this is tough, because like we, we talked, uh, or we said that, there doesn't seem to be a clear forerunner other other than rogue and rep. I'm going to say, and this is kind of a shot in the dark, just thinking that this company had a really good last few years. They're not necessarily ingrained in a lot of the content we do. And they're not, it doesn't seem like they're really in the community too much, but true grit if they can take what they did over the last few years by selling the most dumbbells and kettlebells being in the big stores like walmart target and uh, best buy um, which is crazy i think if they can kind of take that and ex- i think they would be the the company that i would think of that has the best chance of kind of merging adding some sort of tech into it Um, that's like, I feel like they kind of have a, a growth mindset. They have their minds on expanding their products into the tech. And if a specific tech product hits, then I think that would be the opportunity to surpass them. So do you you think that, do you think that tech is kind of going to be what makes the next biggest? So outside of those top three is the implementation of tech for you going to be what kind of differentiates the one of the bigger ones from the others? Yeah. I think if somebody's able to really integrate tech into strength training, not necessarily technology in the barbells, but it like take juggernaut AI to the next level. So where you don't have to, you don't have to go to your phone every in between each set and, and plug that in. If, if somebody's able to do that, the first person I think is going to have a really, really good chance of being the winner in the home gym strength category. 
So I just got to make a Chad Wesley Smith robot that just stands over me. <laughs> yeah. And, and says that that is not three reps in reserve. That was only five <laughs> reps in reserve. Do two more reps. Right. No, that's a good point. I'm always very uh, skeptical of uh, tech. And uh, I actually just talked to my wife about this earlier, actually yesterday. Uh, she was watching a video and there was like this really fancy looking piece of technological gym equipment for, so for what you said, the tech in the barbell and uh, part of the reason I'm a little bit adverse or like, I'm not willing to really get down on something like that is I've seen the rate at which technology evolves and it, it makes me apprehensive to make an investment in tech in the gym, even if it is going to be another company. I know that the question isn't tech in the gym, but, uh, for that reason, I, I can't necessarily agree with tech in the gym being what's going to make me think who's going to be biggest in five years. That's not those three companies. Uh, so I'm trying to look at like people and I, I'm going to play off a little bit of what Brandon said and I uh, go with a made in USA. And I, I know that I have a surplus strength rack, but I, I really think that Jason Campbell is going to bring the heat in the next five years. Uh, something to remember with surplus strength is Jason is literally filling every single order by himself for the most part. So he's bringing his wife on staff. I know he's bringing some other things on staff. I'm not privy to the details, but I would imagine that we're going to see a lot from surplus strength within the next five years. I'm personally really excited for, for surplus. Uh, Jason's a great guy and he's got some really nice products, but what you just said is sort of the reason why I don't think that that would be a contender for a big push at least at that level that we're kind of talking about like obviously not rogue but even like some of the mid-tier i think you've got to have an established infrastructure and massive catalog to have any effort or any chance to compete at that sort of rogue level so looking at a company like fringe sport like they've got a massive catalog they're not as big of a name obviously but that catalog could play a, a hand in it. You look at a company like Elite FTS, massive catalog, huge third-party resale, a very established infrastructure with a pretty big brand, and a, you know Dave Tate's obviously a big personality behind it. They could, I could see them making a push. Um, I would love for someone like Surplus to to make a big push, and I think that Jason will absolutely increase that catalog and bring some really innovative stuff and I can't wait to see it. Um, but I just, I see some of, some of those more established companies, at least in the next five years, sort of pushing the envelope a little bit faster and maybe more. I think he has a really good business ahead of him, but to get to that level, um, that would be tough. And I think you're kind of answering what Brandon said, like, are we answering who's the, who's going to be at the top or who's going to make the biggest impact or who's going to make the biggest splash? I think surplus strength definitely has a chance to do that though. I think I got an answer. Shout uh, two out. answers. Me, I will start a company and it will be the best. <laughs> Gold's Fox Gym. Ticking. They used to make, oh no, Gold's Gym used to make some fantastic stuff. Whether they I still do, do I, don't, I don't know. I'm joking, totally kidding. Uh, no, no, I think there's a lot of these companies that are fabricating things. A lot of these small companies, we see them on Instagram. I mean, they're, they're everywhere. So I think any number of those guys could potentially become something. So that's all I was going to say. I don't like robots in my gym. I will say that. So tech, I'm out. I've seen Terminator yeah, way too I mean, many times. Every time I say that to somebody, that's what they say. But it, nope. that's not what I'm thinking. I'm thinking something smooth. You don't even realize it's really there. And I don't think in five years it will be here yet. I feel but. like what you're thinking is like, so if we, if we combine, uh, combine rather not combine velocity-based training, video tracking, programming that I feel like that's where you're going with it. And, and you can see it on a screen on the, on your TV and it'll say do 90 pounds next set. Yeah. yeah. That's a good idea. Some was, of that technology exists. Per yeah. I, but, um, I, but bringing it together and making it something that's affordable uh, not going to go out of date in six months and then, you know, actually get something that's effective at training. So like Juggernaut AI, incredibly effective at training. Uh, also, I'll, I'll, I'll add to that, that it shouldn't be proprietary, that it should be something that everybody is able to use. So it's universal. So you don't have to have a rogue bar with rogue plates. 
Um, you get a, like a smart rogue bar that works with any number of manufacturers that has the plates with the same sort of like smart chip in it. So they, they read each other when you stack the plates on there. And then all of that is just, you know, goes into an app. So it doesn't matter what, uh, what brand you're using. They all sort of work together. I think that's the only way it's going to work. Otherwise, if, if it's gotta be, nice. be, if it's gotta be, you know, you have to have this certain brand in order to work. It's, it's not going to be adopted. I mean, I think, I think uh, it, go ahead, go ahead. I was just going to say, I think the only pro, I mean, that would be nice in an ideal world, but I don't think anyone's going to take the time to spend the R and D to come up with it to say, all right, now everyone's kind of like it's open source. Right. You can go and use it. So, I mean, you could yeah. get into licensing yeah. and stuff like that, but I think it gets tricky. So I think if something were like that were to happen, it would have to be like a, I'm just gonna throw out the name Peloton because I think up until now that's been like the all inclusive experience. And that's one of the reasons why it's sold so well. But to Jake's point, I think it, it would have to be something that's better than that and all encompassing you know, at first with probably just a proprietary brand that eventually would be spread out and others would kind of try to duplicate that. Yeah, I agree. Right. One brand to start and it eventually evolves, yeah. So I'll give my answer to this question. And uh, I'm surprised nobody said this yet. And I'm a little biased, I'll admit, but I, I think that the brand that's going to do well, maybe not be number one, number two, number three, but number four, Adam. Adam. Bobby and I know Adam agrees with me because- You know it. Because, I mean, it's really about the strategy of Admat. Admat is willing to work with anybody um, and not necessarily competing with everybody, but making things that accompany your power rack, accompany your bars. It goes along, it's sort of like figuring out how to, how to fix a problem that you have or service a need that you have. And I think that strategy is what has brought Abmat to where it is today and will continue to propel Abmat into the future. It's, um, it's really funny you say that because I have a shit ton of Abmat stuff from Admat. And just until recently, the only thing I didn't have was an actual Abmat. So like I'm sitting on their box <laughs> yeah. box now. I have their crash pads over there. I have the barbell pillows. I have the half ring pull down sleeve. I have every, they have a lot of cool stuff. I think people just associate the name Abmat with Abmats, but there is a lot of stuff that they have to offer in there. Right. Like you said, they collaborate with a lot of people. They're open and willing to try stuff, which is also really cool. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. They're another one of those companies that listens to people and, you know, tries to figure out how to how to fix the problems that they have or, you know, get feedback, tweak a product and make it even better. So I think that that is a really good strategy moving forward. And I think it's it's going to take Abmat through the roof. I think that's a really good pick. And they've had a very impressive growth. Even over the last year, their direct e-commerce has grown significantly. And then, of course, they do all the wholesale to the rogues and et cetera. Um, right. They even, yeah, so that, you know, that's going to be another huge, you know, aspect of their business going forward. And plus, now that they're doing... Oh, sorry. Yeah. I was just going to say, plus, it's all made in America. So the, the whole, like, rogue versus rep thing, not made in America, Abmat's got that to their advantage. Yeah. And, you know, you look back six months ago, Abmat really wasn't doing all that much in terms of marketing. Now they're on podcasts like this one with Jake and Adam and they're getting their name out and they're really sort of showing the world, Hey, we're here to solve problems. Bring us, bring us problems and let's create a solution right. that's going to appeal to the, the greater masses. So I think that's a really good pick. Yeah. They're, they're in the we the weeds, just like we said, rep has been over the last five years. And I think that's going to pay off and they're, they're helping people like, Adam wouldn't probably wouldn't have had anybody to go to with this preacher pad idea, or it would have been a lot more difficult to probably negotiate a deal. Um, so they're like, they're willing to help out. I mean, I would say we're normal folks, you know, we're not <laughs> necessarily right. producing products uh, left and right. So yeah, I think that's, I think that's another benefit that they have going. And I would also just like think that I would also say that they've improved with their marketing substantially, like you said, over the last couple of years, and they know who their target audience is. So I, I don't see them going anywhere either. Maybe not number one, two, three, or four, but they're definitely going to have an impact over the next five, 10 years. Yeah, for sure. And then before we 
I'll go. I haven't gone yet. Oh, sorry. I'll, I'll talk. No, it's fine. I, I've been I was going to give the stats. I've, I've been interjecting a lot. Um, but so my pick, I'm going to say this is more someone I think has a lot of potential in the next five years. And it's not someone who makes something in America, but it's also not somebody that makes something overseas. So it's Irwin Fitness Supply out of Canada. Oh, mm. nice. nice. I think one. they've been around for like a year and a half. And I think it's, they're too new, at least to my knowledge that I could say, yeah, they're definitely going to be there in five years. But from what they've been putting out, I think it has a ton of potential, a lot of, you know, three by three steel stuff, one inch holes, they're building everything in house, which I think is unique for Canada. A lot of the other Canadian companies that are bigger. Well, I, I shouldn't say that Oak club does manufacture out of Canada as well. I think that they're more of a specialty type company though. They do offer like products, but it's a very selected few products like rack J hooks, Campbell handles. Um, but you the other one being on. the biggest one, <laughs> the biggest one probably being like, like bells of steel. Right. And I think bells of steel is going to do great in five years also, but the problem with bells of steel, and there's a huge, I don't want to say untapped market in Canada, but people in Canada are like hungry for good equipment. They don't have access to a lot of stuff. They don't want to pay the import fees to bring stuff from the United States or wherever else. But even in Canada, it's more expensive to buy bells of steel, which is based in Canada than it is for someone in the States to buy bells of steel. And they also don't have like your typical three by three type power racks. They use like 2.3 inch by 2.3 inch. Although right. side note, they are building a custom three by three, one inch whole rack for Calgary barbell. Uh, but Irwin Fitness Supply back on track. They're building everything in house. It all looks heavy duty. It all looks super beefy. They teased some jammer arms yesterday or today. And I hate jammer arms, but they're different. They're unique. They're built in Canada. And I think it's not only going to be great for the Canadians out there, but also potentially trickle down here to the United States because they also have some great things like some J hook roller cups and stuff like that. So that's my potential pick, I'll say. Nice. Good call. That's a yeah, really good a call. Good I forgot about the up north guys. My bad. It yeah, didn't really think about international at all. <laughs> you look at uh, the European markets and things, and obviously ATX is huge. ATX, yeah. I, I can't count how many DMs I have to them be like, when you come to the United States? Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully they'll bring their turtle pad to the United States. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's such a stupid name. <laughs> <laughs> turtle pen i i was i was i was just gonna say uh the, we did this we asked the community in five years who do you think will be the biggest in a multiple choice question and just so everybody knows the results were and um we discussed this last month or earlier this month but rogue had 56 percent of the votes rep 21 percent amazon slash walmart 13 percent and then other only brings only brought in nine percent of the votes so that other category right now is pretty small i'm gonna have to hard disagree with that amazon one too what i found from <laughs> buying things on amazon don't no offense to amazon i use amazon all the time uh is if i need something that's like specialty or something that is a really good product of a x niche Amazon is usually not a good place to go look. Uh, usually if it's like you want to get into something or you need like, a, I can't even think of a good example right yeah. now, but well, uh, coffee, coffee bags, like well, Amazon's yeah. great. But for barbells. I uh, think, yeah, I think the, the idea behind that, and this was, this was also kind of an idea that I, I saw from people responding to this in an Instagram post. A lot of people said like, Amazon's going to buy rep or Amazon's going to buy rogue. So I think that's kind of the idea behind people choosing Amazon or Walmart. Don't they they buy sales on Amazon, don't they? Am I wrong so, there? Does it rep like sell on Amazon? I know they used to at least because I bought it. Yeah. Yeah. And, Some and of I those like others. Parts. Go ahead, Brandon. I was just going to say, I know like the strength go has their plates on Amazon, but it's cheaper to buy from strength code than it is Amazon. So I think some people just throw them up there just because a lot of people like the convenience of it that Amazon offers on their gotcha. return policies. Uh, but to Curtis's point, most of the actual equipment is pretty junky, but that doesn't mean it won't sell. Right. Cause not everyone is yeah. as an enthusiast like we are on this panel. So, <laughs> well, that's what, that's what I meant. But when I said like, when people search 
flooring for their home gym. They're probably on Amazon. Puzzle mats pop up. And they're like, oh, this yep. is what I should get. Cable it's, attachments. Those it's are a the sad worst. world. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Cap. Oh. <laughs> Cap. Hulk fit. I think Synergy <laughs> sells on Amazon too. <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah, so that, yeah. Yeah. So that to, to Matt's point, it's like some of those others could also be within the Amazon and Walmart just because of somebody else's experience of buying Synergy on Amazon when technically right. they're could also be in the other category. Mm -hmm. Right. But Amazon gets a cut. So, I mean, it could be considered Amazon sale. I'm kind of with you, man. I think like whenever somebody starts building a home gym, they don't necessarily know where to go but they do Amazon for all their other shopping or Walmart for their other shopping. So they'd be like, yeah, let me just see what's available on Amazon and then, you know, search Amazon for weight plates or power rack or whatever. And that, that could potentially be wherever they make their first purchase. Well, obviously their first stop should be YouTube. Yes. They probably aren't going to be watching this video. Only this. <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> You guys ready to wrap this thing up? Sure. Yeah. sure. Man, it's been fun. There it is, guys. That wraps it up. Our first ever home gym roundtable. I want to thank all our guests. We got Brandon, Matt, Adam, Kyle, and Curtis. Thanks for spending your evening with us. It was a blast. I hope you had fun. Uh, I was the first listener, and I had a great time. Uh, we'll add all your contact info to the show notes. Um, anybody have anything to say before we sign off? One last chance. Thank Thanks you. for organizing. Yeah. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Thanks, this is awesome. Guys. Good yep. time. Yep. All right. Well, thank you to the listeners. Do you enjoy the show? If you did, give us a review. Reach out in the comments if you want to hear more stuff like this. Uh, Jake, do you have anything for the people? Nope. Nope. We're done with you guys. All right. We'll see you next time. <laughs> thank Bye, you. guys. See you guys. Right. See ya. See ya.